Okay, hi everyone, Mahlzeit. I'm glad that you joined me. I know it, lectures after lunchtime are always tricky, so I really appreciate that. So uh, my session is named Infrastructure as Code and AI, does it fit? So I would like to talk with you about some AI tools and infrastructure as a code. Uh, yeah, how does it fit? How can you use it? And I would simply like to provide you uh, a few uh, examples. Um, at first, I would like to introduce myself. So my name is Patrick Koch. I work as a cloud adoption engineer at AVL. I think I will explain later on uh, what this really means. Um, feel free to get in, uh, in touch with me using the channels. Uh, I also will be here uh, around. And despite from my work at AVL, yeah, I, I really uh, like to make some contributions for the tech community whether it's about writing uh, blog posts or hosting uh, meetups of the Microsoft Developer User Group cards. So sorry, I have a little promotion for that here. So we have some cool events, so join uh, if you have time. Um, yeah, I also um, be on, I'm also on lectures sometimes, uh, on conferences, sorry, giving lectures, also giving workshops. Uh, as with uh, Linda, yesterday we served as a workshop instructor for instructors for the for our Cloud Native workshop. I think it went, went well. I hope they liked it. I'm looking forward for, uh, for the feedback. Yeah, I think that's, that's about me. Um, some background information according to the title Cloud Adoption Engineer. Uh, maybe you recognized um, this from a Kleine Zeitung, this title. So uh, starting with last summer, we established a, a partnership with uh, Microsoft which means a new, let's call it officially, it's called AVL Cloudification Program was established. And it's now the duty, the honor, the challenge of uh, my team and myself to, yeah, to make a lot of software applications cloud ready, to migrate it to Asia, but not simply to migrate it, to also find a proper framework, a proper approaches, uh, and to stick to best practice to, to get uh, the applications ready for a software uh, as a service. And uh, as you can imagine, uh, we have a lot of fun. And um, infrastructure of code is one of my favorite topics. And currently, I also try to use a lot of AI tools. And therefore, um, the idea arised uh, for this uh, lecture. So what can you expect? I would like to go uh, with you through the points. So what is infrastructure as code? Um, how can you use it according to, uh, how can you AI use AI, of course, according to infrastructure as code? I would provide some live demos and yeah, we will make a con conclusion and a uh, question and, and uh, answer session uh, afterwards. So let's, uh, let's start from scratch. What's infrastructure as code? Um, how many of you worked uh, with infrastructure as code so far? Just to get a, an impression. Okay, uh, almost half of it. So uh, what's, what's the intention of infrastructure as code? So instead of uh, doing some manual work, you define, uh, define definition files. You have definition files which describe the resources which you would like to deploy on the cloud. And um, having it in a file, having it in code, of course, brings a lot of benefits with it. You can version control it. You can increase the automation by putting it into a pipeline which yeah, deploys all the resources which you would like to have in an automated way that you even don't need the, the command line uh, arguments for, for Terraform, for instance, or for Pulumi Azure biceps, um, doesn't matter. And you are also ensure that you always have a reproducible uh, environment that's uh, probably a crucial thing if you would like to work uh, with, uh, with the cloud. And uh, you ensure that uh, you have a more um, reliable uh, environment, a more reliable system. So according to that, uh, how can that uh, look like? So that would, uh, would be a code snippet from uh, Terraform. So those folks who uh, visited our workshop yesterday, they already know it. So the bigger uh, block here defines starting with resource and then HRM underline Kubernetes underline cluster. The, the starting uh, point of the cluster of this block, you provide a name, you refer to a location using a, a resource group, you have a default node pool, 
in that case, uh, one node. And um, the statement uh, above, that's a, a resource group. What's a resource group? Um, it's working as somehow as a container for the real uh, resources, not in the context of a Docker container. It's more like to encapsulate the system uh, which you have. So just to get a first uh, impression, how does an infrastructure as a code can look like? Yes, uh, how can you use the AI tools for infrastructure as code? So currently, I made some experiences with GitHub Copilot, Gemini, the Microsoft Copilot, ChatGPT, according to all those use cases. So of course, starting from the scratch, answering, trying to get answers for your questions, try to get AI tools uh, to give you some advices. Of course, that's probably the most interesting one, at least for me, the code generation, code interpretation. So you have a snippet and you would like to know uh, what's that, troubleshooting and security. And I would like to give you some um, examples of all, all those things. So let's start with the basic one, answering questions. Let's maybe start with the Microsoft Copilot. So not, that gets not tricky. So I will start with a basic question. Which AI So that's not, of course, not very thrilling. So I just asked the copilot, which a, uh, AI tool, uh, infrastructure as code tool, sorry, uh, uh, exists uh, in general. And he gives me a list. Okay, yes, you would like to work with infrastructure as code. So there exists Terraform, AWS CloudFormation, Ansible, Pulumi, etc. Okay, that's, that's very basic, not very thrilling. Uh, of course, maybe let's stick to Terraform. Um, let's think about a more, uh, yeah, a, a tougher question. So let's see. So now Gemini lists a few uh, pros and cons of the co-pilot, so of the rival, and of course of Gemini itself. But let's see. We get the very honest thing, so start with Copilot. Since it integrates in your existing workflow, da -da -da, can be a good starting point to get familiar with Terraform basics. Okay, so we always get a different uh, answer. So last time when I uh, had uh, asked the very same question, uh, it proposed if you would like to start coding with your IDE, then start with Copilot, and maybe let's do that. Let's switch to the code generation. I'm sorry that. That's very tricky with the mic. So what if you would like to create some, some real code? To visual R Studio code, almost from scratch. So I will now uh, create a Terraform configuration almost from scratch. And uh, using Copilot, there are different ways according to get code generated. Either you start simply coding, or you provide some comments uh, for which you can derive uh, a suggestion from Copilot. So I will do the first. So while I will start uh, simply start uh, with the code. So as you can see, the great. Uh, thing here, that's already a suggestion from uh, Copilot. I think I will do it like that. And here, it's not just one proposal, so you get several ones. So that probably doesn't fit, but that looks more promising. So I will um, 
but uh, it's not uh, sufficient now for my uh, demo, which I would like to do. So the, the goal of this configuration is to create um, uh, a Kubernetes cluster on Asia. And you start with a mandatory Terraform block, which um, configures your configuration. So I will now click on Accept uh, Words. I would like to go in this line, because I don't want to do it for AWS. I would like to do it for Asia. Looks better. So I can accept uh, the proposed uh, thingy with just uh, clicking on tap and then click enter. Yeah, I get a next and probably also next one. Yeah, that fits. Uh, here I would like to stick exactly to 2.0 and I would like to throw away that line for the demo. So it's always a good idea, of course, to, to review it. And as next, yeah. Copilot already suggests uh, the provider block, which is also uh, mandatory in, uh, in that way uh, for that. So uh, we would like to stick to Asia. Our provider is, in that case, the A Asia RM, the Asia Resource Manager. So that's now the first part of the configuration. We set the Terraform block, the provider block, but now what about the real uh, resources? I will put that into a main TF file. And now I will do it uh, in a different way to get the codes. I will uh, now start writing comments. No, that's not what I want. It's okay some, sometimes. He doesn't like me. Nah. Pardon me? So sometimes we really have to do uh, several tries. So today he really doesn't like me. But maybe uh, let's continue with the Kubernetes. Let's give it one more try. Let's use please. I think I have to do it another way. Okay, that's what I wanted. So as you can see, sometimes he really doesn't like me and then you have to, yeah, to take the alternative. So yeah, that, uh, I don't like that, uh, let's call it So GLT, resource group, East US, yeah, okay, never mind. But now let, let's try it again with a comment for the Kubernetes cluster.
that looks promising. So I wanted Copilot to create or to give me a proposal for an Azure Kubernetes cluster. So again here, the great uh, code, that's not a proposal. So we have here uh, the Azure RM Kubernetes cluster uh, named GLT-AKS. So here we just get one um, proposal. Therefore, yeah, I will accept that. And that's already it. That would be, an, from my point of view, a valid um, Terraform configuration. Let's see where that works. Just to prove it to you, currently I don't have any cluster provisioned. But now let's provision it with Terraform. So the first thing is Terraform in it. I would like to do, uh, I would like to establish the connection to the backend. So it downloads now the plugin, which I can use for the uh, further commands. That's now probably a, an important command, Terraform validates, so it proves the syntax and, oh no, I have an insufficient service principle block here. So what can I do? Let's ask Copilot. I Ah, sorry, still working. So what happened here? Um, I got an error here, insufficient service principle block. So according to uh, Terraform, I'm missing this uh, service principle thingy. And I simply do now the uh, troubleshooting and I ask the copilot, hey, what about that? And of course, Copilot uh, knows much more than I do, and um, Copilot already tells me, okay, uh, of course, you need to have a service principle block uh, in your code. I can fix that. Let's click on accept. And as you can see, we got now this uh, service principle block. Yes, according to the syntax that we can improve, but you can, it's not a thing, uh, either you rely on the things which Copilot proposes to you, or you do it, you think, you review your uh, configuration on your own. So here I stick to this specific version, to 2.0. Uh, but I uh, know that I don't need this uh, service principle block for the specific version 2.65. Uh, so therefore I will again remove that. Of course, uh, the copilot now um, marks me that something is wrong here because he now doesn't recognize that I changed um, the diversion. He recognizes it, but he can't uh, derive anything from that. So therefore, let's do another uh, validate. Ah, yeah, sure, of course. We now are using a different version of Terraform. How can they know that? They don't. Therefore, I run Terraform in its minus minus upgrade. So I now would like to upgrade from 2.0 to 2.65. Uh, 2 and after running that, Terraform validate. I should get a successful uh, output here. So next would be Terraform plan. So I would like to create a plan. And I'm using afterwards this plan to provision the instance. So that's, uh, by the way, the uh, the recommended way uh, you can, you would be able in theory to uh, already start with the last command to Terraform apply to provision it, 
but uh, it's a good practice to uh, to use the plan uh, first to get to know what you would like to, to create and afterwards apply that command. In that case, oh, sorry, Terraform apply and as you can see there was a plan created. Okay, let's stick to that. And after a few seconds, we should see some logs that something is happening. And we are going to create now the Kubernetes cluster and the dedicated uh, resource group. So that happens now. Uh, it will take uh, a few minutes. Therefore, in the meantime, let's switch back and continue with security. What about security? Imagine you get a code snippet which looks like that. So that's a network security group, for instance, for a virtual machine. But can you recognize what could be a problem here? Anyone with an idea? So, yeah. Yes, yes. Yes, so uh, after, after a few uh, years as a software developer, having a code snippet with that many asterisks is probably not the best idea to apply. So uh, this thingy here allows, as the colleague mentioned, uh, all traffic, all inbound, inbound traffic, and you probably don't want uh, to have that. So uh, because you want, would like to set up a security rule, for instance, for virtual machine with a proper, for proper purpose, for instance, to just uh, allowing um, RDP uh, traffic, for instance, to, to create a remote desktop uh, connection uh, afterwards. And um, therefore, I asked Copilot uh, to inspect that. So, Copilot, start inline chat, and I ask again my very simple question What do you think about the security rule? I think it was. Is it secure? And of course, Copilot checks that, that it's probably not the very best, that you, that you don't should use that for uh, productive uh, environments. Because, yeah, uh, allowing all inbound traffic is probably really not uh, the best idea. But in addition, ah, that's not working probably. I will switch back to the code. So the Kubernetes cluster is still uh, in progress. So I have here now my security rule. We can now ask Copilot whether he can improve that. So I'll ask him, can you improve that security rule? Made changes. So sometimes he, it seems he, that he didn't have uh, the coffee so far. Sometimes he gets more, okay, he gives more, um, uh, more uh, statements. But let's see what he did do. So he, yeah, uh, okay. He, at least he uh, checked that, okay, according to the name, and uh, according to the things, okay, let's uh, get rid of at least one asterisk and um, let's just open uh, that specific port for, for, uh, re for the remote desktop connection, for instance. So sometimes, yeah, uh, you need several tries and uh, you need to be uh, patient. Let's see how far we are with our Kubernetes cluster. Refresh it and as we can see here in Azure Portal, we have now our Kubernetes cluster named GLT-AKS. And looks like he's already running. Yes, so we got here the apply uh, was complete. So we have now two added uh, resources, Y2. So it's uh, the Kubernetes cluster and it's uh, the resource group. So therefore, two different uh, resources. So that's now about uh, how to 
generate code, how to do troubleshooting, and how to, what about uh, security? Maybe some last thingy here. What about code uh, interpretation? What if you see something like that? Uh, I'm also not that used to, to that uh, kind of code. Let's see what happens here if I try to copy that. And let's use Gemini maybe. So let's see what Gemini uh, proposes here. Yeah, right. So that was what, if, what you've seen before. What was a code snippet written for Asia by SAP? And it's about creating a container registry. So I'm not used to, to BICEP. There exist several infrastructures code tools. So I just know, uh, to be honest, uh, Terraform well. And therefore, when I see something like that, yeah, I wouldn't have uh, a, any clue. So I just would uh, see the keywords and yeah. But for that, um, I think um, Gemini or the Copilot um, works really well. Uh, also, of course, uh, the Copilot, so you get a, a good description, description of the parameters, the resource um, definition. And here at the end, I really like that. So a, some kind of conclusion. So this code snippet defines an Azure container registry resource in Bicep. So that's totally fine uh, for me. All right. So as as just one minute is left, I would like to end this session with a conclusion. So as you could see in the demo, it's great to ask the AI thingies for questions, general advices. Um, Copilot is really cool if you would like to start in your IDE with creating code, but not uh, be aware if you trust uh, all the things which you get. Sometimes they, uh, yeah, they, they don't work. Sometimes he refuses to, to give me some proper uh, suggestion. Um, it's of course always a good idea to review the, the configurations or the, the files which you uh, created. Um, but it definitely uh, speeds you up from my point of view because uh, I don't know what's, what, what about you, but I'm used to write probably f one specific code thousand times. And for the next time, I still don't remember the right syntax. And therefore, Copilot or the AI things are cool to get some, uh, some proposals. Uh, you can see the code. You'll think, oh, okay, yeah, that's, that fits. And uh, you will continue and um, you get the code, you are familiar to the code, uh, you can see it, you can uh, check that it could probably fit. Of course, uh, try to, to verify it. Um, don't rely, of course, for 100% uh, for on the AI tools, but uh, from my point of view, I, I really like to work with it and yeah, it it's, uh, speeds, speeds up uh, my development work. So I, I hope you, you liked um, the demo and the explanations. Um, looking forward to some questions from you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for the talk. I have a question. How do you cope with um, imaginary variables and configurations? So in, what I have encountered was um, when generating stuff like YAML or, or infrastructure as code configurations that sometimes uh, the whatever AI tool is starting to um, propose undocumented or actually unexistent um, configuration options and how, how do you figure out if the recommend or if the, the code is generating is actually good or, or at least um, valid or, or not without using main you can use Terraform validate but if it tells you this isn't existing how do you go on with this yeah that's a good question um, I think he, in, in, in that case for, for Terraform without the Terraform validate I think it would be really tricky so I really rely on that 
and according to two variables. So when I create uh, some codes, I always start with the full resource, and afterwards I ask Copilot to uh, to refactor it to create uh, meaningful variables uh, sticking to the code uh, style out of it, and that works probably. But um, getting code and to ensure whether it really is meaningful and whether it's, uh, it really works. Uh, to, be, to be honest, I, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> so I simply, uh, I simply tried. Yeah, I really simply tried. So I don't have, uh, unfortunately, a proper answer for that. Yeah, but thanks for the question anyway. Um, if you ask uh, this AI tool to uh, tell you what language that uh, this code is written in, uh, do you have any concerns that uh, this AI tool knows your uh, source code, which maybe uh, gets compiled afterwards, and this specific AI tool or this specific company would never know about? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, definitely. Uh, I would assume that, yeah. So, therefore, I am really glad that I uh, write code which is really generic and which um, doesn't contain any business logic so far. So, uh, I'm really um, a little bit paranoid about that. So, therefore, I, um, yeah, I'm glad that I code in Terraform and not uh, with a very specific language. No, it's it's an important uh, topic which you raised, and um, I, I, I'm not sure whether there exists an official statement. But um, or even if you have an official statement, probably you also read the news that if you create a, a Cognito session for a specific browser, that no data is collected, but you know what, which report we got for a few days before. So therefore, I, I wouldn't rely on that, yeah, that this code is really not uh, transferred. Yeah. Any more questions? In that case, thanks for joining me.